Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've got some goodies here. Intel have very kindly sent me over uh, a review sample of their new 10th generation processors, the i9. This is the Top Dog 10900K. It's a 10 core, 20 thread, 5.3 gigahertz uh, turbo boost processor, and also Intel are calling it the world's fastest gaming CPU, which is something we'll be testing in a minute. So we've got the new chips, but as well as that, uh, we've also got a dinosaur, which I just so happened to throw in here because it's my nephew's birthday. Happy birthday, Oliver, you're three. And this is, uh, well, it's yours, but for now I'm gonna keep that there. I might actually end up keeping that myself. But as well as that, we also have uh, a new motherboard because as you probably know, the 10th gen chips require the new LGA 1200 socket. So we've got a Z490 here from ASUS, the ROG Maximus uh, 12 Extreme, which is a bit of a beast actually. But the question I have is how does Intel's 10900K compare to AMD's 3900X, which is a 12 core 24 thread processor? They're in the same sort of ballpark for price, or at least it was until AMD cut the price this week. It's now down to about £410 or $420 for the 3900X, which is a good 120 less uh, than Intel's 10900K. So it's even better value for money. But I wanna stick with this video anyway, not least because I've put about a week's worth of work into it, but it's still an interesting comparison between the two because they're the closest in terms of core and thread count, and in terms of launch pricing at least, they are competitive. But things are getting even more complicated because I've seen rumors that AMD are about to announce three new updated CPUs for release in July. The 3600 XT, 3800 XT, and the 3900 XT, with five to 10% improved performance thanks to increased clock speeds and better overclocking which if true could really put the squeeze on Intel. Anyway, getting back to the 10900K for the moment. Now Intel claimed this is the world's fastest gaming CPU. Well, it's still based on their kind of prehistoric 14 nanometer process. So to counter AMD's efficient third gen Ryzen parts, Intel have instead opt clock speeds to a potential 5.3 gigahertz on one or two cores out of the box, which they've managed by increasing the chip TDP to 125 watts, while also improving the heat spreader to try and limit heat issues. Interestingly, the chip can also detect the two best performing cores, which it will then boost up to 5.3 gigahertz. But as we'll see in the results, hitting 5.3 is one thing, staying there is another. All right, let's get to the testing, and I'll be comparing it versus uh, my old i9-9900K, so the previous gen uh, flagship Intel processor, and also the AMD 3900X. And across the board, I'm using the same cooling, the same NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, 32 gigs of RAM, and a similar case. And I'm also running the games off an incredibly fast and also massive four terabyte Sabrent PCIe M2 SSD. So first question, is 5.3 gigahertz as advertised on the box? Well, not this box, this is a review sample box, but is it actually achievable? Well, the 10900K's max all core boost is 4.9 gigahertz, although this dropped to 4.3 under sustained loads after about 30 seconds. And even with my 280 millimeter AIO, I only ever saw it hit 5.3 gigahertz for a fraction of a second in less demanding apps and games. I also did a little overclocking on the newer chips to see how that changes things. I went for an all core OC of 4.2 gigahertz on the 3900X, and while I could get a little bit higher by varying the clocks on each core, I feel like this is a good balance. On the 10900K, I managed a quick and dirty 5.2 gigahertz all core overclock with hyperthreading, which sustained in gaming and light workloads, but stressed all the cores and it throttled back to five gigahertz almost immediately. And as with stock speeds, down to 4.3 or 4.4 after about 30 seconds. At 5.3 gigahertz, it throttled sooner, while 5.4 meant switching off hyperthreading cores completely, but it still throttled just as quickly. So I'm sticking at a 5.2 gigahertz all core overclock. All right, let's get onto some benchmarks and starting with Rainbow Six Siege, and we see the Intel chips have an advantage here with higher frame rates across the board, especially at 1080p where the CPU and clearly the higher clock speeds are better utilized. The difference lessens though as you jump up in resolution. In Battlefield 5, the 9900K and 10900K performed very similarly with overclock yielding pretty minimal gains. It was a similar story with the 3900X, which was a little bit slower at 1080p, but matched the others at 1440 and 4K. Playing a bit of Warzone in the latest Call of Duty, and we actually see lower performance on the 10900K versus the 9900K, which I suspect may be due to the 9900K at stock maintaining its boost clocks for the longer. Overclocking does even the field though, and in both cases, it's still ahead of the 3900X, but by less than 5% in every case. Wolfenstein Youngblood showed a 6% improvement at 1080p when coming from 9th gen to 10th gen i9, with the advantage at higher resolutions disappearing almost completely. Overclocking gets basically no gains on the 10900K or 3900X, except for the latter at 1080p. 
Clock speed is clearly important here though, with the Intel chips offering decently higher frame rates at 4K. In Overwatch, the main takeaway is just how similar performance is across all the chips. And considering the prices, it's a great result for AMD. Overclocking the 10900K boosted my FPS by 5% on average across the board and about the same at 1440p on the Ryzen. But when we're hitting around 200 frames per second at 1440p across the board, it's a great result all round. Performance in Fortnite is pretty similar between the 9900K and the 3900X at all three resolutions, and about 6% quicker on the stock 10900K at 1080p, 8% at 1440p, and 4% at 4K. And I got a pretty minimal increase from overclocking the newer chips. Then in Cinebench R20, we see a big jump in performance, 24% from the 9900K to the 10900K, and around 1% boost with my overclock. But both scores pale in comparison to the 3900X, which is a further 15% faster at stock and 21% quicker when comparing OC scores. Geekbench 5 saw the 10900K's single core results a little bit over the 9900K, but again, it's the multi core score that really sees a meaningful improvement and actually here challenges the 3900X. But what about video editing? Well, in my Premiere Pro CPU only export test, we saw around 21% faster encoding speed versus the 9900K which improves by a further 11% when overclocked. So that's quite impressive actually, but it still loses out to the 3900X with its extra cores and extra threads, which make it 18.5% faster at stock and 13% faster using the overclock. Now, when it comes to overclocking and power consumption, it's clear Intel have already eaten into any headroom the 10900K may have offered. Bear in mind, this is technically a 125 watt part, but even with out of the box settings, stressing all the cores means it sucks around 240 watts for the first 30 seconds or so before dropping back to a more manageable 125 watts with 4.6 gigahertz across all cores. Most of the time in games or less intensive apps, it's between 95 and 130 watts though. Whereas the 3900X at stock speeds never went above 216 watts running all cores in Cinebench. And by setting an all-core 4.2 GHz overclock, it was actually much closer to 175 watts. Like the i9 though, in gaming this was much lower, between 45 and 105 watts. So while we are getting lower clock speeds, generally the AMD uses less power. Alright, so that was a lot of numbers, but to answer the question, is the 10900K the fastest gaming processor in the world? Well, yes. I mean, the 9900K was before it, but now this is a few percent faster. So why do I feel torn about it? Well. For my money, it's just too expensive, and I don't think it really offers value for money if gaming is your priority. It's clear that at 1440p and 4K, it's the graphics card that's still the performance bottleneck, even with a 2080 Ti, so you're much better off saving some money on a CPU and plowing it into a more powerful GPU. There is some difference at 1080p where titles are more CPU bound, but often the frame rates are so high that any differences won't be that obvious, even with a high refresh rate screen. So really the 10900K is for people like me who play games but also want uh, the extra performance for production or work, like I do lots of video editing so uh, the extra cores and extra threads come in handy there, but if you're just playing games then I think the 10600 or 10700 or the Ryzen 36 or 3700 chips are better options. And speaking of better value, the now discounted Ryzen 3900X is way cheaper than the 10900K and that makes AMD's chip an easy recommendation over the 10th gen i9, especially for production work loads. So if you do want a hybrid gaming editing PC, then this is a much more cost effective option. So that was a pretty long and quite technical video, but hopefully it's given you a bit of an idea if you are looking for a new processor, uh, which one should you buy, and also the performance difference between uh, the top end Intel and AMD consumer chips. And right now, you know what, AMD is killing it in terms of performance and value for money, and along with potential new XT uh, chips coming soon, it's like a one-two punch against Intel. It's great to see this competition though, it's good for us consumers, uh, we're getting more bang for our buck, but yeah, Intel, kind of feel like they're on the back foot right now. But what about you? Which processor are you looking to use in your next PC upgrade? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, a little subscribe or thumbs up would be amazing because it did take a good week or so to make this video. And hopefully I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.